This is an introduction to vernier calipers, just understanding what the tool is used for and how to do the, uh, the math on the measurement that you're actually trying to attain or that you are trying to pick up uh, when you are doing precision measurement on engines or any other components. So one in particular here, and they're all very similar. Some have a dial face on them here for you to be able to visually see the incremental value uh, easier. Uh, in most cases, machine shops tend to use the ones with the slide face on them, so they have a incremented value based on decimal uh, position to determine how much the measurement actually is. Uh, the vernier caliper can be used for pretty well three different types of measurements uh, on any particular components in the automotive industry and other industries. One in particular is using the jaws on the inside here, which is actually what we call our outside mic. So this is for measuring across something and measuring that outside dimension of, for example, my finger. The inside dimension can be done with the jaws here where we actually go in and pull up to that measurement and then read the value to attain that particular size that we're looking at. So outside, inside, and then the last one is on the bottom of the vernier caliper is our depth mic portion. So this can be set on top of a surface and then drop down to read the depth of that particular component that you're measuring. So if you need to find out how far a fitting is going to travel, how far a bolt is going to travel, how far a shaft is going to travel, or any other particular measurements. So this one here is a very small one. They do come smaller. I have seen the four inch ones, which are only this long. This happens to be a six inch long one. Okay, And all vernier calipers can read uh, what they say on the scale. And this one here in particular reads from zero inches right up to six inches. It almost can actually go to seven inches, but it's not allocated here. But just in case you're measuring something just over six, you can still read it on this particular unit. Um, it also reads, uh, this one here happens to read in 128 thousandths of an inch, also on the top scale. It's not something that's usually used very much, but uh, depending on what the application is, and I've got a bunch of different ones here just to look at different application. So this one here uh, reads the imperial measurement on the bottom. In most cases, they read metric versions on the top, or vice versa, imperial on the top and metric on the bottom, depending on the manufacturer of that particular vernier caliper. So looking at the next one here, this one again is uh, very similar to the one that I just discussed. Of course, we can still measure the outside, the inside, and the depth mic portion. But like I had mentioned, this one here uh, has on the top the ability to read in imperial measurements, so in thousands of an inch, and on the bottom it can read in millimeters. So again, like I had said, vice versa, some are on the top, some are on the bottom. Depending on the application, if you tend to lean more so towards reading metric values, then you might want one that has a scale on the top just for ease of application of reading it. So again, all tools are usually bought for the purpose of application, not necessarily just a generic tool. So when you are purchasing one, make sure you look at the values that are on them and it pertains directly to the type of work that you're going to be doing so that it makes it easy for you to do the reading. So here's another one. This is one's quite a bit larger now. The last one we looked at here went up to eight inches. This one actually goes up to 24 and almost into and beyond up to the 25 inch mark. So again, this one has outside, outside jaws on it here for reading outside of a measurement. And then it has inside jaws for going down inside and reading the size of something, for example. Okay, and then it also has Actually, this one doesn't have a depth mic on it because this one is particular to doing shafts and bearings. So this one uh, was used for actually quite a bit larger dimensional sizes of bearings on tractors and buses and stuff like that. So uh, this one here in particular, the scale on this one, uh, it is only in imperial measurement and it has a outside scale reading so it would be this one. And then it has an inside scale reading, which would be this one. And because the jaws are of different dimensional sizes, 
then the increments start at a different point on the scale here. And this one, because it's for tight tolerances on bearings, instead of it reading from zero to 25 thou increments as the smallest amounts, and then up to the inch values, this one reads from zero to 50 thousandths of an inch increment. So we can break it down into another 25 thousandths of an inch more and be, have a better pinpointed measurement for accuracy with this particular one than the smaller one. Although this is not as convenient to reach into places as these ones are. So we'll take a look at some measurements and then we'll t take a look at the math pertaining to what we actually see on the vernier scale and how to actually interpret that so that we have a dimensional value uh, for the actual measurement that we're taking. Okay, so we're going to take a look at one smaller measurement. First of all, something that's going to be under one inch. So we can look at the decimal increments on the vernier to determine the size of it. So I'm just taking this uh, hydraulic fitting and I'm just going to pull it up tight to it and then lock the jaws. Then I can take the component out and then I have a locked measurement, which now we're going to take a look at the scale and determine it. Okay, so we've Taking our measurement now, now it's determining what the value actually is. When we take a look at the scale on the vernier caliper, there's a couple things we have to look at. Number one, any of these numbers from zero to one would be up to one inch. So for an example, 100 thou, 200 thou, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one full inch. In between each 100 thousandths of an inch, there are increment marks in here. There are four of them in each segment. So when we start here, this is breaking it down into <clears throat> 25 thousandths of an inch. So the first one is 25 thousandths, the next one is 50, then 75, then 1. So we have 0, 25, 50, 75, 100 thou, 125, 150, 175, 200 thou, 225, 250, 275, 300 thou, and so on through the entire inch scale on the vernier caliper. The next one we take a look at is on this top scale right here, and it allocates that it breaks down this top scale into 1 thou increments, 0 .001 inches. So each one of these marks here is worth one thousandths of an inch based on the value that we see from zero up to 25. The confusion comes in is where we line up these marks with these marks. Technicians tend to read these numbers and then add them to these numbers. And that's where a bit of confusion comes in. If I was to cover those numbers there and only look at the 25 thou increments as they line up here, what we're looking for is any one of these that lines up with the value that's up here, then we're going to add them to the overall value, and I'll explain that as we go here. So the top scale is zero to 25 thousandths of an inch in one thou increments, 0 .001. The bottom ones, are in increments of 25 thousandths of an inch, which is 0 0.025 and up to 100 thousandths of an inch. Then the zero to, or to anything past the one inch is going to be one inch plus the value of the 100th increments and the 25 thou increments based on one thou per increment on the top scale. Okay, now taking a look at the measurements, we talked about the uh, increment values and now we need to put them into place. So anytime we're reading the vernier scale, we want to read anything that's in front of the zero to get our first number. So right here to the vernier zero scale on the slide scale, we are reading 500 thousands at the very minimum. So we have 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. Then we're going to break it down into smaller values to read exactly what it is. So we have 500 thousandths of an inch, which we write down as this. Then we need to break down a little bit further and see how many hundreds of increments we have in here. And I'm seeing here that I have 25 and I have 50. 
I'm not quite at the 75 yet though, and it's just past the 50 and ever so slightly past the 50. So we have 500 thousandths of an inch, and then we have 2550, so we have 550 thousandths of an inch. So we write down our second number as this. Then the third one, and what it's sometimes easier to do is get rid of these numbers, and then just look for the mark that lines up with the upper scale, which is the smallest scale here at one thousandths of an inch in increments up to from zero to 25. So now what we want to do is see which one lines up, and it looks like the 9 lines up precisely. So when we're going to write that number down as follows. So we add all these up, 500 thousandths of an inch, 50 thousandths of an inch, and then 9 thousandths of an inch, giving us a total of 559 thousandths of an inch which is just basically over half an inch, but when it's precise, and it has to be precise, so when we talked about this outside measurement that we've attained here, we can say to the manufacturer, or where we're ordering it, or the reason that we're measuring it, is that it actually reads 559 thousandths of an inch. Okay, so we've attained that measurement of 559 thou. Now let's take a look at one that's going to be slightly larger and it's going to include the over an inch value now and how we go about reading that. So I'm just going to unlock my vernier again. I, always, I don't know, I just I like to slide the things to make sure that they, they go back to zero. And I'm just going to pull this inside dimension of this bearing. So now the last one we used is we did an outside dimension. Now this one I'm going to do an inside dimension and we're going to take a look at the value of how big this internal race is for this particular bearing. So now we'll take a look at the value on the vernier and depict exactly what this measurement is. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at this measurement that we took here as an inside measurement of that inside race of that bearing. So now we're talking about reading something above one inch. When we did the last measurement, we read everything before the slide vernier zero scale, which was actually below one inch because we were somewhere in the 500 and something range last time for the last one was 559 thou. So we were in this range. Now we're beyond the one inch. So whenever we take a look at this, first thing we have to do is we write down one inch and that is as follows. Then we break down again the hundreds, and I want to read everything in front of this zero scale, so I know that I have 100, 200, 300 thou, not quite 400, but 300 thou. So now I have one inch, 300 thou. Then I need to break it down a little bit further into the 25 thou increments between the three and the 400. And it looks like I have 25, 50, 75 on the scale, and it's just ever so slightly past the 75. So now I have one inch, 375 thou. And then we would write that down as follows. The next one we need to look at is we need to break down the scale again, and like I did last time, I'm just going to introduce this paper so that I can get the increments out of the way, or pardon me, the numbers out of the way, and look just at the increments. And it looks like the 4 lines up. So if the 4 lines up, that means that we have 4 thousandths of an inch because this scale on the top reads from 0 to 25 in 1 thou increments. So if the four lines up, that's one, two, three, four thousandths of an inch. So we would write that down as follows. So when we total this measurement up, we have one inch, 375 thou, plus the four, which is one inch, 379 thou. So that gives us a total as follows. Okay, so taking a look at that last measurement again, just going back and putting the outside 
uh, jaws of the vernier caliper, pardon me, uh, inside jaws of the vernier caliper into the bearing. And we have attained that reading of one inch 379 thou. So if you remember, if you take a look at decimal values in inches also, for every 125 thousandths of an inch equals an eighth of an inch. So really this bearing is one inch and three eighths, or one and three eighths as an inside diameter. It's slightly larger being the 379 as opposed to 375, probably because there's a bit of wear in here. And I can see that there is wear, and this is a very used bearing. So in that particular case, we're actually four thou larger than three eighths of an inch, which would support maybe two thou of wear on each side of that radius, which is not very much on a bearing. So I would say that based on this measurement, even of a used bearing, that we're pretty accurate as far as being one inch, three eighths, one and three eighths inches, or one inch, <coughs> 379 thou as a total. So that's the just of looking at increment values in a decimal on vernier calipers when we're looking at imperial measurements. The best way to learn to use these is practice. If you have a hard time, and I know everybody tends to use this as a backup or as a primary source of reading measurements, is using a digital vernier. Digital verniers are very accurate as long as you buy a fairly decent one. Just make sure you zero them every time because they do change. All precision measuring tools change with temperature. <clears throat> so if you leave this out on the side of your box, every time you close it, it's going to be back to zero. Um, outside micrometers are very susceptible to changing their dimension and you will have to make sure that they are uh, calibrated each time you use them if you are measuring precision stuff such as we've been doing here. So if you have a hard time seeing these scales, digital verniers work very well. Digital verniers are still used widely, uh, are used more so with technicians in the automotive and the truck industry today because of quickness and accuracy. Uh, as far as having to read the measurement as opposed to going back and breaking it down into values like we did to read them. But to understand the actual dimensional values based on decimals and fractional uh, segments of the inch, then we need to understand how to break these measurements down to actually get a really good reading. So practice up and I wish you the best of luck.